I'm very uh, exquisitely happy about how well we're doing, both in the government and commercially. But the most important change in the U.S. government has nothing to do with talent here. When we got to, uh, when we started building this company, the idea that software would power intelligence, war fighting, general health issues, was viewed as something esoteric, scandalous, obviously questionable. The idea that America's primary advantage, pr premier advantage would be software, was viewed as also esoteric, academic, self-serving. And every institution in America, and especially the Pentagon, have begun to come to terms with the idea, the reality that uh, hardware-driven systems purely are, go are inferior to software-driven hardware systems, and beyond that, our adversaries are as good or better at building hardware systems and are def have a deficit in building software. But, but what is different about Titan as compared to, say, Maven, is that you are entering new relationships with other hardware providers, right? Like Anduril is one example. Explain how that is working in this case okay, actually, Titan. Actually, I see this as a commonality. America needs to establish dominance on the battlefield. Maven, what's publicly known about Maven, is one of these projects that actually took what America's the best at in the world. Software. Software, and put it in the hands of our warfighter. By the way, at enormous costs. You're sitting in Palo Alto, I had people protesting here, hundreds, putting up uh, change in front of our office, calling us Nazis, because we were dedicated to serving the American people, because we had the sense God gave a goat, and we realized that if you're gonna do really important things in this country, you should defend this country with with every asset we have. And what really happened on the Silicon Valley side is that you got, because of that success, because of the power of it, and quite frankly, because of our success, people realize this is a place where you should invest and make America even stronger. And what, what then what happened is you got a whole ecosystem of defense startups and an ecosystem of people inside the Pentagon who are ready to embrace that, that are doing things, by the way, that are very similar to what's happening in the commercial space. And what are those things? We're going to look at software not off PowerPoints. We're going to look at, we're going to buy software from people who have actually sold software commercially. And what's unique about Titan is not the difference, it's that it's the logical extension. And what is that logical extension? People who've built software products that have been used on the battlefield and used commercially. You have to ask yourself a question. If your software is so good, why have you not sold it commercially and made yourself billions of dollars? So th that that simple insight, which see, you see in the battlefield in Ukraine, which you see in Israel, Israel, is something that is hard for institutions to, to internalize. And the Pentagon, this step is one of the most historic steps ever because what it basically says is, we're gonna fight for real. We are gonna put the best on the battlefield. And what is the best? The best is not just some, not one company. It's a, it's, it's a team of people led by the most prominent software provider in defense in the world, Palantir. There, there's something you said there that inside the Pentagon, people are ready for this. Bloomberg did some quite deep reporting on the use of Maven specifically in 2024 so far, and the complaint from operators in the context that it's used for targeting is that it's still not quite there. Okay. It's still, this is, but I'm just offering okay. you an opportunity okay. to respond okay. to that I'm logic. not going to respond because I'd have to tell you all sorts of things. There is no one, by the way, that was a long and very important article. Everyone should read it. With, what I, the way I read the article was this is the most important thing, one of the most important things the Pentagon has done in decades. Right. I can tell you the way our adversary see Maven and our friends is like, what the F? How did they actually produce this? And I tell you what the average citizen reads that article is like, thank God. We're spending money on things that are more valuable than what we're investing in. And you, to go into more detail, you have to go to all sorts of classes. I that program is one of the shining stars of what this country has done and serves as a template for we're going on the offense, we are going to assert dominance, and we're going to negotiate after we're the best in the world. Uh, Alex, I, I host a technology show and I want to talk about the, the technology, yeah. its current capabilities and where it can go. Is that platform ready to move from assisting in targeting, which is intelligence basically, to giving more information. The, the article also looked at the idea that there is a hope from intelligence services and the US government that it can be one day in a position to recommend which weapon to use to give more okay. tactical let advice. Let me give you let me give you commercial examples because I Please. can't I can't go into I can't go into what it can do and what it can't do. I can tell you what we're doing commercially. Please. Right now you're gonna see a normal non-engineer sitting at their terminal 
tasking satellites, uh, ex exporting a logic inside the security model of the company to, to, to figure out which satellite should be over which part of their agricultural uh, assets and what should happen based on weather conditions. Now, you can just imagine how you could do that with a weapon system. This is exactly what Palantir, Palantir commercial, not Palantir highly classified environment, Palantir with somebody that has been hired five days ago that can't write code, that's very smart, may not speak English, and has just entered the enterprise is doing that workflow. That is happening right now. And that is why you know, the thing that, the, the, this revolution, which is highly confusing, it's highly confusing. It is. Yeah, it's confusing because a lot of the stuff is BS. Then there's the poetry side of it. I love poetry. If I could go read more poetry, I would. Enterprises don't need more the poetry. The BS, you mean what, what? Well, it's like, I don't know, somebody delivers PowerPoint, we're gonna give you, a, you know, it's like, look, everybody has to try to sell something. If you don't have something to sell, you sell words right now. So okay. you're, selling, you're selling something that doesn't work, can't work, you're explaining to your enterprise, you can't have the car you want, which is honestly Palantir, but you can have the car you don't want because this and this and this and this, and you have to buy it. And that, that's, that's, by the way, that, that is a plague on many societies, less so America. There is this problem in Europe that there's really no high-end software vendors. Luckily, our adversaries have this problem. And you've but, spoken about your frustrations with Europe not being more adopted. Well, I'm pro, I spent half my life in Europe. I want the West to win. So I want, but it's a confusing revolution. If you're sitting there and you're sitting in a society that has led industrial revolutions for hundreds of years, and all of a sudden the industrial revolution is happening basically in one place, and that's right here. That's confusing. It's confusing because three vendors are saying they're going to offer the same thing. One thing is like, you know, I'm going to explain to you why this doesn't work. You have to buy our BS thing. The other is like, oh, it does work, but it's only poetry. And then there's a third category, which judges by the fruits we provide, which is exactly what we're doing, which is like, great, we're not going to argue about this part of our product, that part of our product. I'm happy to explain it to somebody who's technical. We're going to show you what happens in four to six hours as opposed to what happened in your whole enterprise over the last two years. We will talk about the commercial business. We will talk about boot comes. But let me just... Oh, I don't. We can talk about whatever you but want. But <laughs> a final point, you yeah. talked about the confusion of the revolution, okay? Today probably will be the first time that a president says artificial intelligence in a State of the Union speech. So it's a very simple question. What is your summary of this administration's leadership, so to speak, of the US in the context of AI? The, the, you know, it, it's very helpful if you spend a lot of time abroad. Because like, if you look at this internally, like internally in America, there's a long list of criticisms that you could make of anyone. This country, is the dominant country with no second country in the world. So whatever we're doing, it's working out pretty damn well. So it's like, you know, yeah, could we be better? Could we have better regulation? Could we understand these things better? But, but again, we are dealing with a revolution. That's one of the really confusing things, again, for Americans. It's like, normally you have a revolution and multiple countries are participating. This is a revolution where the technology is pre being produced in America, mostly in Silicon Valley. But you do have multiple customers, so just bear with me on this one. Take, for example, Israel, where you are doing some work with that country. The administration, as an example, is pushing for a ceasefire in that region, but you are working with Israel. How do you manage that? Because it sounds like your first priority is the United States. How do we manage? Look, we, I'm very happy, we very happily supply our products to our allies, including Israel. Um, I don't, like Israel, with, what's going on here is, does America provide Israel with more aid? I don't think there's any question of, does Israel have the right to buy the world's best technologies, assess them and implement them? Israel, I think, has decided we have some of the world's best technologies. They've implemented many of them and publicly discussed some of them. And I, Palantir, I think the really, the orthogonal, maybe more in question was, why do we say in public what everyone else believes in private? I.e., we should defend the West, we should not apologize for fighting terrorism, and we are gonna provide our sharp tools to our allies. Let's talk about the commercial business, okay? You told my colleague, Lizette Chapman, one month ago, almost to the day, quote, we don't know what to do with the onslaught of demand in the commercial context. Do you know one month on what to do now? Uh, no. 
I mean, if you, you're going to see a boot camp here, series of things, we've had to, you know, we haven't been able to meet demand. We've had to tell people we couldn't accommodate them. We have uh, I, hundreds of people coming, not just people, but leaders of industry. And if you just look at it from the internal dynamics of how do you deal with the contracting? How do you deal with the implementation? It's true, these things have gone from taking us three months to four hours. But it's also true that- Well, the idea is you cram four months work, worth of work into a day in these boot camps, right? We, it is not even a day, it's, it's hours. And so- the, And so why is, that, why is that important to Palantir? Why did you go down that route? Well, the most important reason it's important to Palantir oh. is we can fight with people about PowerPoints and their ability to do why stake you, dinners. Why do you keep bringing up PowerPoints? Is, is, is the point you're making that your competitors go in with a deck and Absolutely. say, this is what yeah. we'll do, but they don't have a product, is well, that? Well, I'm not saying anything. I'm, what I'm really saying is, if you have a well, product- Well, you did. You okay, said okay, PowerPoints okay, okay. many times. Exactly. So what I'm telling to everyone there is like, they may have a product. We're showing you our product. Okay. I can't comment about where they have a product. I can tell you they're, they're very buttoned up and not showing any leg. We show our product. And why are our clients happy? Because American industry knows that this is a structural advantage and that needs the best products. And why is the boot camp overrun? Because the clients themselves are tired of these damn steak dinners and the golf. They want to see products that actually work, that actually live up to what people are saying. What is it, What are people saying? You will transform your enterprise. You will make it cheaper to run your enterprise. That you'll make it safer to run the enterprise. You'll be able to track what you're doing and you'll be able to uplift workers who formerly only could be engineers and now they can be everywhere. And by the way, you can do all of this in America. You can manufacture like you were manufacturing Japan and Taiwan in America. You can use workers that used to have to be engineers right here in this country. And uh, why is it, it's also fun for Pound here because we are winning. Uh, Alex, I've got to ask you before I lose you, the, actually the, the, the most common question that I get to ask you from the audience, I post on social media you're coming on, is when will there be a direct to consumer or a, 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 I don't even know what we would call it, but a, but a publicly available version of AIP, and if that me, would ever me, happen. Let me tell you. Because they see okay. you as a leader in the space, the Palantir, not necessarily you as an individual. Whatever they see, that's I'm happy. But okay, look. Uh, Palantir, you are seeing the tip of the iceberg when you are buying our product now. We've been working on these you things. You can't buy it if you're a person off the great, street. Great. You are seeing the tip of the iceberg of our product development, and we are going to show more and more and more of what we have, and I think people, and I would also like, a lot of those people asking the question, by the way, are not academic. They are investors in Palantir, and they have supported us when we were down on the ropes, and those are the people that we are fighting for. Anyone else thinking about steak dinners right now? <laughs>